Hi everyone. Hi everyone, it's Mo from the York Region and the Toronto Concussion Clinic, and today we're going to go over diaphragmatic breathing. Many of our patients have found diaphragmatic breathing to be very helpful. Um, it's used in a whole range of contexts, and I'd highly encourage checking out our website to learn more about diaphragmatic breathing, heart rate variability, and biofeedback, as they all encompass what we're trying to teach here with diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, for this, I encourage having either somebody with you so that they can place their hand on your diaphragm to see whether you're able to recruit it. Or if you don't have somebody with you, you can always use an object. So you'll see shortly how I use an object to help me guide my diaphragmatic breathing. So to start off, I'd encourage finding a comfortable position in which you can lie down. And if you have an object around you, so I'm using a cardboard box, but you can use a book or some sort of weight, I want you to place it along your belly. Now the goal here is to minimize how much the chest gets recruited or the intercostal muscles, muscles that line the ribcage. And we want to maximize how much motion is coming from the diaphragm. Now, to start, what we can do is place the object on the core and see if you can recognize where the motion's coming from first. So for that, I recognize that the motion was coming from the chest. And in essence, what we want to do is treat the belly or the diaphragm like it's a balloon, feeling the expansion coming from every direction so from the top of the belly, the sides of the belly, and through your back. And what we want to do is shift the motion down. I can edit that part up. Yeah. Ultimately, the goal behind low and slow diaphragmatic breathing is to bring the breath to your diaphragm, shifting the breath downwards as opposed to letting your chest take over. If you've ever had the opportunity to see a baby breathe or a dog or performance athletes, you'll recognize that they breathe the same way. The motion comes from the belly and less motion comes from the chest. So let's switch over into sitting. Naturally sitting is going to be a little bit more challenging simply because we tend to compress the diaphragm to prolong sitting. You may notice that the diaphragm is a little closed off here. The best way to get around this is simply through proper posture. You can also take your hands and turn them upwards or leave them at your side. That helps open that thoracic cavity, the chest cavity. And it's the same idea. You want to minimize the motion that comes from the chest and see if you can maximize the motion that comes from the belly. And I encourage practicing this eyes closed so that you can get a feel for it. It's the same idea. And ultimately, the better you get, the more you can practice in different circumstances. 